In this video, I'm going to teach you a technique to extrude a shape along a curve and get a nice polygonal uh, object. So let's get right into it. So the first thing we need to do is specify a curve that we want to uh, draw the shape along. And the, you don't have to worry much about about the curve as you can uh, edit it later as well once you get a result so let's go to the maya's defaultly created curves slash surfaces shelf and select this uh, tool called the ep curve tool it lets us it lets us create dots on the grid or whatever uh, so we can uh, create a, a curve by simply putting a few small dots let's hold x so the vertex gets snapped to the grid and put it in a few places just left click and you can see the curve is already being made now it's all uh, along two axes we wanted to get a third so let's just go to right click and go to object mode so we can select the curve and then right click again, uh, hold right click and go to control vertex. Now you get these vertices that you can move around and those uh, the position of those um, vertices are uh, going to influence how the curve is behaving and what's the direction and where it's going and stuff like that. So let's move it around a bit so we get a nice three-dimensional curve. Um, this dot here should probably go, yeah. Make sure to rotate camera around a lot so you get to see where, what's going on. So yeah, now that we have a curve specified, what we want to do is, uh, again, in the curves or surfaces tab or shelf, uh, we can pick either a square or a circle or whatever it is you want to uh, extrude along a, along a curve. But let's say we want a, a tube and for that we need a, we need a circle, which is a two-dimensional uh, curve shape that now we need to uh, somehow let's turn off the grid by pressing this uh, on grid button. We now need to position this uh nerves curve to the to the position of uh vertex of the first or last vertex on uh, on the line on the curve that we created so uh, uh we're going to do that by clicking left clicking on the curve then going holding right click going to control vertex and now we see all the vertices so now we hold shift and press left click to select our uh, our circle. So while holding shift, uh, I'll go to uh, press W to enter the translate move tool and then hold V and you will see this uh, pivot change to a circle. That means it's uh, it's it's actually it's basically a mode to snap to a vertex. Uh, I have a video on that. I'll link that in the description. So while holding V, now you have to drag this pivot to the vertex at the beginning of the curve. You can't do that if you didn't do the the step before this one, which was to display the control vertices. Make sure to follow that step as well. So now that we have the center of the circle positioned to the beginning of the curve. We now have to rotate it. So the way we do that is hold D and you can see that now you can rotate your uh, the direction of your pivot. So we are going to roughly rotate the direction of, of our pivot to follow along the curve in this manner from multiple X. And now you can rotate your uh, circle the way you want it. Now that you have the circle positioned correctly, you 
first select the circle and hold shift and press the curve with your left mouse button you will see the circle uh, get a white color and the curve get a green color so now you go to surfaces then go to extrude and press this little square next to extrude as it means extrude options so now you get a lot of uh, various options. I will go to reset settings so I get the default uh, the default one. So you can play around with these uh, with these settings, but currently we have tube and I'll show you how to get a nice clean tube. So select the tube and as output geometry select polygons. We can already press apply and see what happens. So we get something that's not really it's not really a circle in a base, also not following the curve exactly. So we'll go control C to redo, undo actually, and select this at path mode. Click apply again, and now you will get the curve along the uh, the curve more precisely. Now we also don't want the triangles but also uh, but uh, actually we want quads so let's undo again and select quads and see what happens cool not bad but still uh, we don't have a uh, our topology is a lot cleaner but we still don't have the circle thing now the the reason that's the that's the issue is the amount of uh, polygons that we are allowing this curve to have now instead of standard fit we can go to count so we, if we set count to 200 and click apply we still don't get a, a nice smooth uh, curve actually a tube so what happens if we undo again and increase count ratio to, re to let's say uh, 1000 we get a tube that's not so bad and you can generally just play around with settings until you get something that you like. Uh, if we if we go to general and we set this number of U's and V's, uh, we can probably get something we uh, want. U's being the x-axis, V being the uh, y-axis. In the matter of how many uh, how many divisions the mesh is going to get, so. If we press one, nothing happens. Yeah. If we select one, but let's let's put it to like twenty and see what happens on both. Yeah, this is a bit better. This is even smoother. Yeah. So this way you get a you get a nice curve, nice nice tube. This is uh, let's say this is the result that we wanted. Uh, you can now let's invert the base so we can see tube. Yeah, cool. So now we can select the circle, increase it, increase its radius or decrease its radius to control the uh, the the simply radius of the of the tube's base. Also, you can again select the curve and you can again select control vertex and move around various vertices and you can change the how the how the tube is behaving, which is pretty convenient. So now that we want to save our true tube as a uh, as a regular polygon mesh, it already is, but it's still bound to this curve and uh, the circle. Uh, we can go to modify, actually delete history. It, uh, we need to delete history. We go to edit, delete all by type and select uh, history. Now this mesh is completely independent from the circle and the Curve, so we can delete them and now we get a nice geometrical polygonal actually uh, mesh that we can now do whatever we want 
with. So yeah, that's a pretty useful tool and you're going to need it 100% in various different areas.